I'm Brian Wilson alongside Larry O'Connor. And if an ordinary worker at the State Department or the Central Intelligence Agency or anything like that were sending details about the security of embassies, which is alleged to be in her emails, uh, meetings with private government officials, uh, foreign government officials, and the statements that were made to them in confidence over unclassified email systems, they would not only lose their job uh, and lose their clearance, they would very likely face prosecution. That was Edward Snowden yesterday, a man who (laughs) knows a little something about the ramifications of having classified and top secret information, Uh, although uh, even though he stole it and then uh, apparently possibly handed it over to the Chinese and the Russians, uh, he at least kept it on a secured server. Joining us right now, James Rosen of Fox News Channel. Uh, James, uh, kind of an imperfect messenger perhaps on this, but he makes a good point. Great to be with you, Larry and Brian. And yes, certainly Edward Snowden knows a thing or two, not only about the storage of classified data, uh, but about uh, how it finds its way into the hands of adversarial foreign intelligence services. Um, I think that, uh, you know, with the Benghazi committee continuing its hearings today, we're going to be a uh, witness today behind closed doors. Will be Jake Sullivan, a former top advisor to Hillary Clinton at the State Department, a figure who was involved in the preparation of those infamous false talking points about the Benghazi attacks. With all of this unfolding, and of course, still now, uh, another uh, person close to Hillary Clinton, the IT uh, technician who helped set up that private server, uh, signaling his intention to plead the fifth uh, before various congressional committees. This story just isn't going away. It seems to be a drip, drip, drip each and every day. We get we get some new revelation. Uh, Cheryl Mills testified behind closed doors yesterday. For those who don't know, Cheryl Mills, former chief of staff to uh, Secretary Clinton, somebody who, uh, you know, pretty much is glued to the right hip of Hillary Clinton. Knows where the bodies That's are buried. Right. And, and it, she testified for, for about eight hours, but we didn't hear a great deal about it, except that the Democrats wanted the transcript released. What's that all about? Well, in fact, some details about Cheryl Mills's closed-door testimony yesterday have emerged. Uh, we do know that she was asked about the private server. Uh, we do know that, in fact, she was uh, one of the people who, along with David Kendall, the longtime attorney for the Clintons, uh, took, uh, took a hand in deciding which of the emails should be deleted uh, and which turned over to uh, lawmakers and to the State Department. Um, and uh, she was questioned closely about that as well as her role uh, in, in crafting that Benghazi narrative. Um, but in terms of the transcript, uh, this has been a long-standing struggle between the majority Republican staff of the House Benghazi Committee and the Democratic minority staff about when witnesses get called, which witnesses get called, whether a transcript is taken of their testimony or not, when and how it should be released. Essentially, the Democrats in the minority don't want to be in the position of finding selective tidbits from witnesses' testimony leaked to the news media, uh, so that's why they're insisting on getting access to the same transcript. Uh, James Rosen from Fox News Channel is our guest, and we've been watching so intently, James, of all your coverage of this story, and I'd, I'd love your take and maybe additional information that you may have gotten on this story that came yesterday from our friend Eli Lake and Josh Rogan at Bloomberg View about the FBI now scouring that server to see if there's any evidence of spying or hacking from foreign entities. How serious is that? Well, it's, it's very serious, but it's also uh, very predictable. Uh, given what we know about where this server was, uh, how how uh, shoddy configuration of it was, uh, I've done some reporting of my own. If you Google James Rosen Fox News uh, uh, probing and and hacker, you'll find the article that I wrote back in March uh, of this year, uh, in which I worked with uh, some act, what they call white hat hackers. These are people who uh, are hired by corporations. In this case, the individual I was working with has a long-standing relationship with the intelligence community, uh, and they do what's called penetration testing. They test your own servers, your own hardware, your own software to see how vulnerable to hacking and intrusion you are. Uh, and this individual actually built a replica of Hillary Clinton's server in his own cyber laboratory ah. and began poking and prodding it to, to, uh, to stay on the right side of the law. Uh, and was able to show just how shoddy the defenses were. So it's been a long-standing assumption for some time now, I should say, that foreign intelligence uh, services, friendly and adversarial, probably knew about this server, probably had access to it, and, and, and as we've seen, uh, we know that classified information was trafficked on it, 
despite what Mrs. Clinton said in the early going. Uh, James Rosen, quick quick follow up on that. When you say it's been a, it's assumed now that it had been uh, it was known about and was probably accessed by foreign entities. Who's assuming that the the media in town or actually intelligence agencies at this point? No, IT experts that you talk to who who have uh, long-standing association with the intelligence community will tell you that it's almost inconceivable, uh, given what we know about the software systems. And again, if you Google that article, you'll see exactly which software systems. Are yeah, I just did. It's it's a great report, and thank you for bringing it to our attention. It's good stuff. All right, all right, Larry. I, I get your tone, Larry. <laughs> All right, so uh, you know, look, uh, where's this thing going to end up? I mean, uh, the FBI, we, we're we're told, is probing this matter. We're told that it's a national security investigation, uh, you know, to make make sure that uh, that they that there weren't any other places where uh, information is left unprotected. They want to know the depth of of the damage that was done. But we keep being told, oh, it's not a criminal investigation. Right. It was not a criminal referral. Right. Uh, but it was a security referral. But nonetheless. Uh, when you have people now in this very investigation starting to plead the Fifth Amendment, when you have uh, the presidential frontrunner for the Democratic Party engaged in the business of surrendering evidence to the FBI, it sounds pretty serious to me. Um, and, and I wrote a book about Watergate, and, and the Hillary Clinton email server uh, has is starting to take on more and more of the features of an epic scandal like Watergate, complete with people pleading the Fifth, uh, deletion and erasure of critical materials, uh, and even Bob Woodward said it reminds him of the Watergate tapes. I would point out one other thing to you. When it was all said and done, the Watergate investigation metastasized into about eight separate investigations, only one of which dealt with that break-in. You had investigations of the sale of ambassadorships uh, and all kinds of things, campaign finance violations. One thing I think that investigators will also be looking at is one particular email that was released among the, the batch just earlier, I guess it was last week, uh, on Friday evening. Uh, that showed uh, that Hillary Clinton may have been involved in fundraising on behalf of the Clinton Global Initiative, mm. uh, which experts tell me would be a violation of statute. I'm told wow. that Colin Powell, when he was Secretary of State, wanted to endorse the Boy Scouts and was told he couldn't. So this may expand into areas just beyond the, uh, obstruct the deletion of the materials, the sort of... Um, uh, destruction of evidence and so forth to include all kinds of possible offenses here. All right. We're going to have to leave it right there. James Rosen from the Fox News Channel. Good to have you again this morning. Thanks, guys. Always a pleasure. Thanks, James.